Hi, I'm Mr. Simons. And in this video, we're going to focus on the current account deficit. Now that refers to the balance of payments. And what we're going to focus on in this video is how the balance on goods and services. So how the trade balance affects the current account deficit. Okay, it's a bit tricky. There's a lot going on, but I feel like we can work through this together. So let's get started. One key factor that affects the current account deficit is the balance on goods and services on the current account. That the value of bogs, we can call it bogs, it's totally fine, is going to then affect the level of the current account deficit. Remember when we talk about bogs, another way of describing it is the trade balance. And we looked at this idea of the trade balance over there. What I want you to think about is this, if you're adding this to your notes, that this is really important. That the point here, and why don't we highlight this? So essentially, when the value of BOGS changes, then the value of the current account will change. Because remember, when we're calculating the balance on the current account, whether it's balanced to surplus or deficit, we add up BOGS, MPY, net secondary income, and we get the balance on the current account. So what we're saying here is that, okay, so when the value of BOGS changes, ah, oh, the value of the whole current account will change. And what we're going to look at in this video now is that the things that change the value of BOGS, the factors that affect the value of BOGS are cyclical and structural. Okay. So before we move on to what each of those are, let's just quickly understand about the difference between cyclical and structural. Okay, so cyclical factors are affected by economic conditions. So cyclical factors vary. So the impact of these factors varies or changes depending on the level of economic growth. So cyclical factors will be different when growth is high versus when growth is low, but it depends on the level of growth. Structural factors, however, are underlying factors. They are due to the nature of the economy and they do not vary when economic growth changes. They are always consistent. These factors are always consistent. Okay, now that we've got this introduction, let's move into the cyclical factors that affect the balance on goods and services. Okay, so we're starting with these cyclical factors that affect the balance of goods and services. And cyclical factors, if you recall our conversation from just a second ago, are factors that are affected by the level of economic growth. So our first cyclical factor is this one here. That's the world's most tortured one. So our first factor here are movements in the exchange rate. And for our purposes, we're talking about the Australian economy. So let's focus on the good old Aussie dollar. Okay, so what we're saying here is that movements in the Aussie dollar. So what we're saying is that changes in the Aussie dollar are going to affect the sale of exports and imports, which is going to affect the balance on goods and services or the trade balance, and then the value of the current account deficit. So there are two situations we can look at here. Let's change our pen color because, you know, that seems like a good idea right now. Let's say the Australian dollar goes up. And if the Australian dollar goes up, we call that an appreciation. We appreciate it. Anyway, the Australian dollar goes up. Okay, what happens next? Okay, so let's look at this situation of an appreciation. If we get a stronger Australian dollar, 
the first thing that will happen is that exports are more expensive. Well, maybe not the first thing, but one thing that's going to happen is that exports are more expensive. That is, it will take more foreign currency to buy the Australian dollars, which then makes exports more expensive. And when we're talking like economists, what we say is that Australia's exports are less internationally competitive. They're more expensive. And that if something is more expensive, there will be a smaller demand. Demand will contract. So there will be reduced demand for Australian exports because they're more expensive. But at the same time, when I've got a stronger Australian dollar, Australian consumers are going to find that imports are well cheaper. They're much cheaper. And that will mean that there is more demand for imports. And then if we have a situation, so if we get a stronger Australian dollar, we're likely going to get a situation where the volume of imports is going to exceed the volume of exports. This is going to worsen the balance of goods and services and will then worsen the current account deficit. Okay, what would be useful now is if you flip the situation. Work through what would happen if an Australian dollar, sorry, if the Australian dollar depreciates. How is that going to affect the balance of goods and services and the current account deficit? Okay, so you've had a second. Let's now quickly flip the script on the first cyclical factor and then we'll move on to number two. A depreciation. Exports are going to become cheaper because the Australian dollar is weaker. So they will become more internationally competitive and there will be greater demand for Australia's exports. At the same time, imports, 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 imports will become more expensive because the Australian dollar is weaker. So exports are going to sell more relative to imports. This will improve the balance of goods and services and improve the CAD. Okay, now we're looking at factor number two. Now we're looking at factor number two, which is changes in Australia's terms of trade. Now the terms of trade is a separate concept and I've got a separate video and you can um, click the, the linky thing, the card up the top and you can go and check that out. But just briefly, the terms of trade and we can abbreviate this to TOT is all about this. So the terms of trade refers to the ratio of export prices to import prices. It shows us how much Australia gets for its exports versus how much it pays for its imports. And it's really important, so many multiple choice questions along these lines. The terms of trade is about the price of exports and imports. It's not about volumes. You've got to say this after me. You can't get this one wrong. The terms of trade is all about prices and not volumes. I'm going to wait a second just to hear you say it back. Look, most of you gave it a go, so I'll accept that. So what I want you to think about in terms of the terms of trade, in terms of the terms of trade, hilarious, is this. So let's say that export prices, Australia's export prices, are rising faster than Australia's import prices. So Australia is getting more money. Well, it's the, the prices Australia is getting for its exports is rising faster than what it pays for its imports. If export prices are rising faster than import prices, it shows in a relative sense there is rising demand for Australia's exports compared to its imports. So what we can say here is that if there is rising demand for exports relative to imports, this will likely improve BOGS because Australia is selling more exports potentially because of that rising demand and it will likely improve, reduce the current account deficit or make the current account deficit smaller. 
Now, you might also have a different perspective on this. You might say, well, actually, if Australia's export prices are rising faster than import prices, won't that make Australia's exports less competitive? And that's also a possibility. But what I want you to think about is this. If we, in general, have Australia's exports prices rising faster than import prices, okay, that shows in a relative sense, there is rising demand for Australia's exports compared to its imports, and that will likely improve the balance of goods and services and likely improve the current account deficit. I say likely because there are other perspectives on this one. Okay, so now we're looking at how will domestic economic growth affect the balance of goods and services and the current account deficit. The U's really do look like V's, don't they? So let's say we've got higher economic growth in Australia, okay? Higher economic growth in Australia. What this is going to mean is the following. If we've got higher economic if we've got higher economic growth in Australia, consumers are going to have higher incomes. And if consumers have higher incomes, they have more disposable income. So they have more income that they can choose to spend on whatever they want because all of their requirements, all of their um, must spend, all of their essentials will be taken care of. So if they've got more disposable income, then they're starting to get on the internet, do a bit of online shopping because they've got this extra money and start to keep their eye on buying some more imports, some more exciting goods from overseas. And if you think about the nature of the bogs, what we've been talking about, if there is, if imports start rising relative to exports, that's going to worsen the bogs, worsen the trade balance, and then worsen the current account deficit. So higher domestic economic growth is likely to worsen Australia's bogs and its current account deficit. And you can flip the situation and add that to your notes now before we move into those structural factors.